Um, I'd like to say hello as well to my Chilean team who's actually watching this live stream and the Golden Nikas is actually because of them. I, I feel pretty much guilty because of the pictures holding the Golden Nika when it's really about them who are able to, to build this great project that, that I lead called Ciudad Inteligente or, or, or Smart Citizen Foundation. Um, so thankfully we won the, the Golden Nika this year and I want to share with you our, our logo. If, if you see it very carefully, um, something happened actually just a day ago after we won the Golden Nika. And we're a bit happier right now because of that. And, and so we're a happy team sharing with you um, this particular conversation about digital communities. You can follow us in, at Twitter at, at Votinteligente or personally at, at F. Hoysen. Um, RS Electronic is a great scenario to talk about uh, digital communities. And it's because of a symbiosis. You know, RS Electronica is a symbiosis. Uh, understanding symbiosis as a close and often long term interaction between two different species. And here, of course, we're talking about two different species of art and technology that communicate between each other and, in some ways, improve um, each other thanks to their particular background. You know, the imagination of the art and the structure and the method of science. Um, for this case, we can talk about this, uh, similar symbiosis for this panel, digital communities. You know, you have what's digital on the one side, technology, right, the internet, and on the other side you have communities. Other people talk about civic hackers, right, citizenship on the one side of the symbiosis, and the other side you have uh, hacking, you know, technology, using of the web, applications, and so on. So the background question behind this panel is what kind of relationship it, is this, right? And behind that big question, you also have lots of different questions which are not able to address in just a couple of minutes, but things like can web technology protect uh, uh, the public interest? Can web technology change politics? Can it start a revolution as we started the previous panel? Can it kill a revolution as, as people have uh, also addressed? Evgeny Morozov has, has some work about that as well. And more generally, has technology the ability to improve our lives? Um, I think without being a, a cliche, I think that the big answer to that question is a big no. Uh, and that no also was mentioned by Lena in the, in the previous panel when she said that the role of the internet and social networks has been pretty much exaggerated. Uh, this is not a, a, a Facebook revolution, it's a, it's a street revolution, right? It's about real people having real problems. Um, Similarly, in Chile, we have faced this year, 2011, a great revolution from the students. Uh, this is the march of the, of the umbrellas. Uh, we gathered that day under, it was very cold, it actually snowed that morning in Santiago, which, which doesn't happen. Uh, and we gathered that day because, not because of the web, not because of the internet, we gathered because of there was something happening to our lives. You know, the issues you discuss with your family at dinner, those are the, the, the issues that gather you. Issues like education, about losing a job, about the price of food, about not having the ability to exercise your rights. Those are the, the issues, those, those are the reasons why you gather. And that's why people can, can support different causes. It's not the web, it's not technology in itself. Uh, of course, technology can also be a great tool, right? And, and David Sasaki mentioned as well that uh, internet was for 2011 the same thing that the TV was for the US movements of 1968. Uh, I strongly believe that, and this is a great example of how the web can change things. And it's a very creative thing as well. In the case of Chile, it, it was a, more of a middle class revolution. I wanna address that issue uh, a bit. Uh, there's a blog, someone said, you know, education in Chile has died. Uh, so we are all zombies of education, and we want to protest in front of the presidential palace. And this guy wrote a blog, make an invitation to everyone gather and dance thriller in front of the presidential palace as a protest. And he made, with his friends, a YouTube video of a tutorial of how to dance thriller, right? And he posted uh, on Facebook, people gathered, and this is the result.
I, I deeply admire these people. They, they are great. Uh, students have been very creative in their way of protesting. And, and of course, I mean, the, the technology and the web had a pretty good, uh, important role to play in gathering these people, but at the end, they were there dancing thriller and, and you know, trying their steps hours earlier because education, because they wanted to have a better kind of education, a more accessible one. So again, the focus should be on the tools. Uh, and you can use technology as a good tool to defend yourself sometimes from the police. Uh, but you could also use technology for something else and to gather for not that good purposes, right? And which actually happened as well in Chile. Uh, and yesterday, for those who were here and, and had the chance to hear Humberto Madurana, who uh, is a great uh, bi biologist and, and philosopher in, in Chile, um, he invited us to, to, to look at the process of understanding things, but not just focusing on the objects, but actually on the process of learning. So the process of learning is going to be different according to different people who want to understand things. Uh, similarly, I think that we have put so much attention on this particular object uh, of, of the internet, of the tool, the applications, the ability to gather data and so on, but not to focus on the hand who actually holds it. So it's the same issue. This is about real human people. And strong technology can really do strong things on the political world if it is properly embedded in social life. And this is what we want to do, what we try to do at Ciudad Inteligente. I just want to showcase briefly some of our main projects. This is the Citizen Balloon project. It's based on, on a great work done by folks at, at the MIT. Um, Jeff Warren and his team has done balloon mapping and we borrowed the same idea using a, a recycled bottle to build a, 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 some kind of an aircraft and put a, a camera, uh, not a camera actually, it's an iPhone or an Android with streaming ability and we uh, attached it. Okay, so, so we attached that iPhone to a balloon uh, with the aim to stream what was happening on the protests. Um, the, so we want to show what was happening on the protests, which was not actually being shown by real television. So we want to show with technology, very simply, uh, what was going on. And the iPhone was a great tool to do that. You know, we, we fit, got that iPhone to an helium balloon and lifted up about 30 to 50 meters high to show from an alternative perspective what was happening on those protests. And those are some of the images you can get. It was all about a, a peaceful movement and not about throwing stones and the stuff that actually the, the television was showing at that time. Uh, I just have a couple of minutes, so I want to showcase as well other projects we develop at Ciudad Inteligente. Uh, we are a web platform that holds several other tools. Just show uh, the, the, the main ones. Bot Inteligente was our first tool and allows us through the web to monitor what Congress does. You can find every single bill online. And we scrap the data from the Congress website and we visualize it in a very didactic way. You can understand how your yeah, congressman votes, uh, what is the funding that those congressmen have. You can understand basically how legislation works. And it's a great tool then for NGOs, again, for digital communities. It's about reducing information asymmetries. You give them information that allows them to do what they do best. You give this information to an, an environmentalist NGO, they can protect uh, the environment. You know, dial, uh, having a dialogue with Congress now because they have new information. They know about the law, they know who votes it, they know who is in favor of it, they know who have against it, thanks to these kinds of tools. Um, another relevant tool we have built, uh, I have to just run, uh, this is called 21 de Mayo, and it's basically a visualization of data about uh, how the president has accomplished or not his commitments that he has made to be the president. And you can show by nice visualizations what is actually happening, right, if, if policy is being delivered or not. Uh, this is one of my favorite projects. It's called the Inspector of Interests. Uh, we built a database with the declarations of congressmen about uh, their assets and interests. We found that information was not very complete. So we built this website, gathering other sources of data, coming from the public register, from the tax and revenue service, and we visualized what are the real interests that these members of parliament have. And you can actually see it. 
Now, this person, for example, this senator, has only declared half of what he actually has. And this is important in terms of when you do legislation. You can also visualize the areas of interest where he has those interests. And thanks to Bot Inteligente, we can cross-reference that with legislation itself. So you can find interest associations between assets and the way you do policy. Uh, smart access or access intelligent is another tool we built which allows you to make freedom of information requests based on FOI law uh, online from a single window and a one-stop shop. You can ask questions to the government and all the answers to those questions again can be published online in a, data, uh, in a database th that is publicly searchable. So basically before you ask a new question you would like to search the database and see if someone else might have asked that question before you. And so it's more efficient in the long term, even for the government who will not, not have to reply two times for the same issue. Um, other visualizations like this one, it, it, it shows you where all the antennas of the different mobile phone companies are. Some of them are, are actually are put there illegally and you have the right to know where's the closest antenna to, to you. And finally, regarding the, 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 um, the student movement, we did a nice visit visualization as well about the conflict. On the left side, you found the proposals coming from the stu uh, students. On the right side, the proposals coming from the government, and you can see where are they getting close or where they are far away. This allows citizens to understand the social movement, to understand where's the conflict, of course, understand where's the solution. So just a final thought, knowing that, that the time has, has ended. Um, just want to stress the idea that was also stressed in the previous panel by Sineb Tufeci about collective action. I think that at the end, technology, web technology is about collective action. Uh, she said this is about shared problems that would be effectively solved by mass participation. Um, again, social problems of the same ones that we have had for several years. Uh, this generation, the past generation, and so on. Technology is making something different and it allows us to gather to uh, create causes and to share those causes very easily, very uh, quickly in a way that wasn't uh, possible before. Uh, so just to say that, that at the end, I think that these kind of tools we have created, some of the ones we'll see now in a few minutes uh, uh, from, from other colleagues, they will have success if those great tools, those nice data visualizations, web applications, mobiles and so on will be great if they are greatly thought to be embedded in a real social context. That's when they will actually make sense. And just this time, to, to finish, Beatrice, just to share this, this second's video, which summarizes the whole idea of what our organization does. Okay, so that was it. Thank you very much. We're very glad to be here. We're very honored of winning the, the Golden Nika, as, as we mentioned in the gala. I think that we're very grateful about this particular mention.